The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theatre Incorporated, presents Jamie and the Promise, starring Jane Darwell and Bobby Driscoll. Joan Leslie is your hostess. <laughs> More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. You know, time is a fleeting thing, gone as quickly as it comes, and yet... Time is one of the most valuable possessions we have. It's wonderful what each one of us can do in the seconds that are strung out one after another, in the seconds that add up to a lifetime. You know, all of us should have time to be courteous to those around us, to be considerate of others. That's important because a lot of unhappiness in homes comes when, when people haven't time to be patient with one another. It's worthwhile taking a little time to consider that quarreling in a home never solves a problem. It's worth time to realize that separation or divorce is not the solution for misunderstandings and unhappiness in a family. It's worthwhile taking a little time out every day for family prayer. Yes, we all need God's help. And family prayer is a family's investment in happiness for today, tomorrow, and always. It's a trust fund for the future of a family. It's a partnership with God Family prayer is God's time in our homes. Let's give it to him. Joan Leslie returns following tonight's family theater play, Jamie and the Promise, starring Jane Darwell and Bobby Driscoll. It's late afternoon of a warm Georgia day. The last rays of the sun beam slantwise across a cotton field to a small weathered farmhouse sitting askew on four brick pillars like an old woman with lifted skirts. A wisp of blue smoke curls up from the kitchen chimney. And on the back porch, a man in overalls sits tilted back in a cane-bottomed chair reading a newspaper. Suddenly, the chair legs thump to the floor as the man rises and hurries into the kitchen. Sarah, I found it right here on page four of the weekly. Ralph, I wish you'd go to the well and draw me a bucket of water. I'm plumb out. Well, in a minute. It, it says here right that... now. But don't you want to hear about the contest? Oh, another one of those. Ralph Carter, if you'd spend half as much time working this farm as you do them contests and puzzle pictures, we'd make a decent living. But, honey, this contest is so simple a child can do it. It says so right here. And the first prize is $1,000. And the last time it was 15000 don't mean a thing. If it ain't a newspaper contest, it's a pinball machine up at the store in town or the chance board at the barber shop. And you've never won a dime's worth of anything. Oh, yes, I have. The time I was in that army camp in California, I won $50. Well, just because you won something on a radio quiz program doesn't mean you can give up working for the rest of your life. But I also won a year's supply of shaving cream. Well, whatever it was, it sure ruined you for hard work. That was five years ago, and you think you can go through life getting something for nothing. Oh, Sarah, me and you know that there ain't no future in this year farm. I want something bigger for you and Jamie. And you just wait. Someday I'm going to hit it lucky in one of these things. When we got married, you was going to put me a sink in the kitchen. That's been 12 years, and I still tote water in the bucket. All right. I'll go draw the water. And while you're outside, look down the road and see if Jamie's left Mr. Thatcher's yet. What's he doing over at Thatcher? Oh, send him over with a dozen eggs. Miss Thatcher's hens are molten. <laughs> oh, that Jamie. Ten to one, he's down to pig pen looking at Thatcher's bunch of Berkshires. He's plumb crazy about pigs. Well, when you see him coming, send him down to the pasture to get the cow. I want to milk early tonight. Well, I'd better whistle for him, then. No, he'll be along. <laughs> yeah, but when? I reckon he'd rather look at pigs than a picture show. Well, then leave him be. You get the cow yourself. There ain't many pleasures for a young one that don't cost nothing. Gee, they sure are 
are a fine bunch of pigs, Mr. Thatcher. Yep. I bet you they're just about the prettiest pigs in the whole county. Yep. Reckon this will be a good year for pigs. Good corn crop. Uh, yep. Not enough rain for peanuts yet. Nope. That white, wh- that white-faced one there now. Reckon she's about the prettiest one in the whole litter, ain't she? I reckon she is. You, you ain't thought about selling her, have you? Nope. I can't say as I have. I've been thinking about getting me a pig like that to raise for the stock show this fall. I reckon she'd just about take the blue ribbon. Yeah, I reckon she wouldn't have no trouble at all. Of course, I wouldn't tell Ma and Pa about it. I'd like to surprise them. Be a right smart surprise, twit at that. I reckon she's worth about five dollars. Five dollars? That's an awful lot. She'll be a good sow one of these days. Well, I better be going. Goodbye, Mr. Thatcher. Tell your pa I'm going to ride uptown tonight if he wants to go. Yes, sir. Five dollars. Gee. Five dollars? <laughs> you might just well ask me for the moon. But, Ma, it's an awful good investment. No telling what a feller could do with a pig like that. Well, son, now you just wait. One of these days, I'm going to buy you the finest pigs that you ever seen. Maybe I'll get you a little bull yearling, too. Oh, go on, Ralph Carter. Quit fooling the boy. But, Pa, I can't wait. The pig shall grow up. And maybe Mr. Thatcher will sell her or something. Well, uh, <laughs> maybe your ma would let you have some of her egg money. I'll do nothing of the kind. That egg money goes for Jamie's school shoes. I don't hold to spending hard-earned pennies for no pig. But, Ma, why? Well, all right. Just spend $5 for her. Come a siege of colliery. The pig catches it and dies. Then where'd you be? Out $5 and nothing to show for your money. Oh, now, Sarah, you can't never get nothing without taking a chance. You never get nothing without hard work. And the sooner you learn that, the better. Yeah, if I could borrow a few dollars from the bank and buy me a tractor, you know what I would do? I'd clear out a new ground down there by the creek and plant that bottom land in the sugar cane. I bet you I make a good crop down there. Pa, did you say you could borrow money from the bank? Yeah, if you're a good risk. Gee, Pa, you reckon Mr. Benson up at the Farmer's Merchants Bank would let me borrow five dollars for the pig? Well, I don't know, son. More than likely he'd want some collateral. Co- collateral? Well, I'll put it this way. Uh, you got to let him know that you're going to pay him back. I, I would. I'd promise. Well, if your pa had a good crop coming in the fall, that might be enough. But banks aren't run on promises. Morning, Jamie. Morning, Mr. Bascom. Not much mail today. Just a seed catalog for your ma and a postcard for your pa. It's from the Pinola Soft Drink Company. Now, here it is. It says uh, they're sorry your pa didn't win anything. Pa sure be put out when he hears that. He was counting on that one specially. Yeah, he ain't surprised. He spent enough on postage to have bought him a good mule. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Bascom. What's that? I'd be much obliged for a ride to town. Why, sure. Hop right in. Thanks. I'll leave the mail in the box. I thought you looked mighty spruced up for a Monday morning. A little early to be going to a picture show, ain't it? Oh, I'm not going to town for that. I got some business to attend to. Oh? At the bank. At the bank now. Well, must be important business, judging from them new overalls you got on. Yes, sir. Ma wouldn't let me wear my shoes, though. Says I gotta save them for Sunday. <sighs> Women. <laughs> And in reply to your query of the 31st entrance, the Farmers and Merchants Bank is pleased to forward your check in the amount of $17,482. Glad to have your business and so forth. You know how to fix it, Miss Green. Yes, sir. Will that be all, sir? Let's see who that is. Yes, sir. Well, hello, young man. Please, ma'am. Is he the president of the bank? That's right, Sonny. Something we can do for you? I'll take care of it, Mr. Benson. Oh, no. I... I gotta see the president. Well... 
In that case, young man, you come right in. Uh, have a chair. Thank you. Now, what can we do for you? It's a sort of a private matter. Oh? Uh, Miss Green. I'll be outside. <laughs> now, what's your name? Jamie Carter. All right, Jamie. What can the bank do for you? I want to borrow some money. For ice cream? Oh, no, sir. It's a lot of money for a pig. Well, now, that's different. Here, have a cigar, a uh, uh, stick of gum. Thank you. Now, suppose we get down to business. What seems to be your problem? Well, sir, it's Mr. Thatcher's pig. She's the prettiest one in the whole litter. And he says he'll take five dollars for her. Five dollars? Yes, sir. I, I've been aiming to buy me a pig like that for a long time now. I want to raise it for the stock show this fall. And uh, all that's keeping you from this pig is uh, five dollars? Yes, sir. Have you asked your folks for the money? Oh, they'd give it to me if they could. But Pa, well, he just ain't had the right break so far. And Ma worries all the time about Pa. Mm, I see. Well, now, just suppose the bank did lend you the five dollars. We'd have an interest in the pig, you know. Yes, sir. Are you sure you could raise it? Oh, yes, sir. I know a lot about pigs. I already got a pen built down back of the barn. I padded it with pine straw. Hmm. And I even nailed up a board for her name. I, I aim to call her Gloria. Gloria? Well, Gloria, huh? Well, Jamie, I think the bank considers you a pretty good risk. We'll let you have the five dollars. You will? Gee. We're always glad to see a young fellow like you get started. But, Pa, he said you gotta have something called collateral. I, I thought I'd better tell you. I haven't got any. Yes, you have, Jamie. That smile on your face, that look in your eyes, that's enough collateral for me. We'll trust you to pay the money back. Oh, I will, sir. I promise. Cross my heart, I will. <laughs> I'm sure you will. And here's your money. But I only need five dollars. Well, that extra quarter's for ice cream. Uh, a goodwill gesture to all our new customers. Gee, thanks. And will you write it all down on paper, Mr. Benson? About the five dollars? We sure will, Jamie. We'll make it nice and legal. Uh, Miss Green. Yes, sir? Bring in a copy of form number seven. I want you to make out a chattel mortgage on a pig named Gloria. Well, I don't hold with it, that's what. I just don't. Oh, gee, Ma. Gloria won't be a bit of trouble to you. I'll take care of her. Of course. Why, raising the pig will be good for the boy, Sarah. Well, that ain't what I mean. It's the money. Getting it the way he did, so easy now. <laughs> well, now, I thought that was pretty smart of him. Sure, something for nothing. Five dollars without working for it. Following right in his father's footsteps. I didn't get it for nothing, Ma. I just borrowed it. Soon as I raise a pig and sell her, I'm going to pay Mr. Benson back. I promise. Now, Ralph, you see what's happening with the example you're setting for the boy? Ma, I reckon I'll take Gloria Well, down the fella has now. to do the best he knows how, Sarah, and someday... I said I reckon I... Someday your ship will come in, huh? I Ask said I'd me, take that Gloria ship never set pen. sail. Oh, never mind. Come on, Gloria. Ma, you know Gloria's seven months old now. I think I ought to put her on peanuts for a while. Fatten her up. Well, I don't know where you'll get the peanuts. Our patch ain't been holding two months. And them oil drillers your pa drug out here last week tromped down all the vines the weeds didn't kill. Well, I reckon drilling for oil is worth more than one little old peanut patch. Why, if they'd have found oil here on our place, we'd have been worth millions. Yeah, if they'd found anything. Two weeks of churning up dirt and cutting ruts through our crops. All for nothing. Well, it was worth taking a chance. The minute I heard them fellers was in town, I got them to come out here. Well, I heard tell of a man over near Brantley that got $5,000 an acre when they found oil on his land. But we got nothing but a ruined peanut crop. Ma, I was talking to Mr. Thatcher this morning, and he's going to pick peanuts tomorrow over at his place. Well, a lot of good that'll do us. But, Ma, he said if I'd come and help him, he'd give me some. And, and he said Miss Thatcher would be proud to have you come and sit with her a while tomorrow afternoon. She's piecing a new quilt. Well, now, that's right neighborly of her. I think you ought to go, Sarah. You ain't been visiting in a month of Sundays. Well, I... Please, Ma. Well, all right, the people go. There's nothing like piecing a quilt to take your mind off your troubles. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh, my, Davy, you sure are a caution, toting that sack of peanuts on your back. <laughs> hey, Pa, look, I'm a peddler. Well, you all must have had a right nice time over at the Thatcher's. I ain't heard you laugh, Sarah, in, in a long time. Well, it was a real pleasant afternoon. Me and Miss Thatcher pieced quilt squares and talked till the men come in from the field. Then we all had a glass of lemonade. <laughs> oh, my, look at the time I got to put supper on. Ma, is it all right if I take these peanuts down to Gloria now? Well, I reckon, but hurry now, back. Now, just a minute. You all got a surprise coming. What surprise, Pa? You don't have to worry no more about raising pigs, son, or anything. We are gonna get away from this farm. We are gonna have a nice house uptown. You are gonna have a bicycle. Your ma's gonna get a new dress. Have we... you took leave of your senses, Ralph? Where are you gonna get the money for all these fancy doings? Right here. Well, what's that? Well, honey, you heard about the atom bomb. Well, the most expensive stuff in the world right now is what they make that bomb out of. It's called uranium. Well, what's that got to do with us? Well, this afternoon I was down fixing the pasture gate when a fella come by in a black roadster. And he asked the way to town, and then we got to talking about crops and everything. And the first thing you know, he's telling me about this uranium mine of his. Uranium mine? <gasps> Ralph Carter, you... Now, just you... let me finish. Now, let me finish. Well, I tell him how dissatisfied I am here on the farm, and before you know it, I've talked him into letting me in on this mine of his. How much it cost you? Honey, I've got ten shares of stock, gilt eggs. Look at them. And the way that stuff's a selling. How much? Well, the fellow was real nice about that. I, I didn't have much cash. Just the fifteen dollars you had in the sugar cane. <gasps> My egg money. Oh, Ralph, how could yeah, you? But, honey, we had I it. was a saving it for Jamie's shoes and for a dress for me and for... You gave it all to him? Well, I needed it all, honey. And, well, that wasn't enough even, but he was willing to settle for the pig. Pig? Oh, Pa, not my pig. Now, Jamie. Oh, Pa, you didn't. Gloria, she's gone. She ain't in her pants. Well, now, son, don't you worry now. I was going to enter in the stock show next week. I was going to surprise you and maybe get a blue ribbon and... Oh, Pa. The stock show? Oh, Jamie, son, I didn't know. I'm awful sorry. Well, being sorry won't bring back his pig or my money. Yeah, but you don't understand. We're going to be rich. I'll buy you a dozen pigs, son, and I'll pay you back ten times what it took, sir. Not with them pieces of paper. Why, inside of a month, they'll be paying dividends. This time, I've struck it lucky. Oh, you better go get the cow, Jamie. It's almost milking time. Yes, Ma. Well, is that all you got to say? Ain't you even going to tell me that you, you're glad about the money? Oh, I don't understand things like that. All I know is my money's gone. Well, you understand, don't you, Jamie? You know that, that I done it for you. Sure, Pa. It's all right. Maybe, maybe I wouldn't have won a blue ribbon anyway. Only. Only what? I owe Mr. Benson up at the bank five dollars. I said I'd pay him next Friday. I promised. I crossed well, my heart. Well, now, don't you worry none about that. I'll give you the money just as soon as I get my first dividend. But it'll have to be before next Friday. Oh, it will be, son. Why, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if we heard from that stock sooner, Natty. Why, that's Mr. Thatcher. So it is. Wonder what it wants. Evening, Thatcher. Come on in. I ain't got time, Ralph. Nellie up at Central just rang on the telephone. Oh, is there something up? Appears that way. Sheriff wants a little information. Got Nellie to check all the subscribers. Seems he's trying to trace a city-looking feller in a black roadster. A, a black roadster? Why, Paul, that must be D the man... Did he say that he was... Why he was looking for this feller? Yep, got a warrant for him. Been selling restless mine stock all the way from Carolina to Florida. Worth... Oh, no. I knew it. I knew it all along. You seen him, I take it? Yeah, I seen him all right. Well, I'll go ring Nellie and tell her we'll be uptown right away. Well, I'll, I'll go get ready. Worthless. I, I can't believe it. Thirty dozen eggs. Why are we even done without ourselves? You, you mean he cheated you, Pa? He took Gloria uh, and. Yeah, yes, son. But, but what about my five dollars? <gasps> five dollars. I don't know where we'd get it at now. But I gotta pay Mr. Benson. I promise. Well, you just go tell him you're not good for your debt. Tell him you're worthless and no good like your pa. Oh, Sarah. Don't, Ma. Don't fuss at him. I I guess he didn't mean to do it. Why, of course I didn't, son. I'd cut off my right arm before. I just don't understand. It's all right, Pa. 
Someday you'll have better luck. You, you see, Sarah, boy believes in me, don't you, son? Sure, Pa. I, I reckon I'll go get the cow. It's almost milking time. He's a good young and he, he didn't even cry. No, he didn't even cry. Howdy, son. You looking for somebody? I'd like to see the sheriff, please. Well, that's me. What's the trouble? I... I've come to give myself up. You come to get... You what? I've heard tell they go easier on you when you give yourself up. <laughs> well, now, yeah, you've been reading too many funny papers. Uh, what have you done? i I just been over at the bank. But Mr. Benson, he's gone to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. and, and when I asked the man behind the window about it, he just laughed and said he guessed they'd go to jail. Guess who'd go to jail? People, people who take money from the bank and can't pay it back. People who... What in tarnation are you talking about? I got some money from the bank, yeah. and this is Friday, and... Oh, Sheriff, I'm in terrible trouble. You just better lock me up, I guess. Hey, uh, aren't you Ralph Carter's boy? Yes, sir. It was you folks I fell swindle last week, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Well, your father's getting some bad breaks, and now you're in trouble. Does he know you're here? No, sir. I left him in... Uh, I left him with Mr. Thatcher at the barber shop. Mm -hmm. I... I didn't tell him where I was going. Oh, I see. Um, hey, Fred. You want me, Sheriff? Yeah, I want you to take my car and drive out to Ralph Carter's. Where's that? Oh, that little farm next to the old Calhoun place, you know, where the road crosses Bitter Creek. Oh, yeah. I want you to get Ms. Carter and bring her back here. Ralph sometimes ain't got enough sense of responsibility, so we'd better deal with his wife. Okay, Sheriff. Uh, just bring her back here, huh? Yep. Tell her that her boy's got himself in trouble. Now, Jamie, don't you fret. Your ma's going to get this all straightened out. Yes, ma. Miss Carter, do you mean the boy's upset just because he can't pay back that $5? That's the story, Sheriff. Hmm. He's been worried all week, mm -hmm. ever since his pa let that swindler have his pig. <laughs> Why, son, that's nothing to get a head up about. I'm sure Mr. Benson won't prosecute. But I promised. I crossed my heart. Well, that's pretty serious, I know, but uh, we can't lock you up for that. Well, why not? What? I said, why not? Now, look, Sheriff, you know what kind of man Ralph is. Mm -hmm. Good-hearted, but always looking for the easy way. Right. Well, someday he's got to learn there ain't no easy way. And this is as good a time as any. Well, I, I don't get what you mean. You put Jamie in a cell, yeah. and then you send for Ralph. Mm -hmm. I think you'll find him over at the barber shop or the general store. Well, I... Uh, and, well... Jamie, when your pa gets there, you do just like I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Oh, Pa, I thought you'd never come. What, well, Jamie, son, what you doing in there? I, I guess you better ask the sheriff. Well, what's going on here? What's the boy done? Well, I'm, uh, I'm just doing my duty, Carter. Seems your boy can't meet his debt. Well, debt? Mm -hmm. On account of you and your big dealings. But, jail, you can't put a young'un in jail. You ain't got no right to do it. Sarah, it's he... It's all can... your fault, Ralph. The boy works hard to raise him a pig. And what do you do? Give it away. Yeah, your wife and I wanted you to see Jamie here, Carter. Because if you don't mend your ways, he might well wind up staying behind those bars someday. A kid can stand just so many years of wanting things he can't have. Uh, Sheriff, can I see you a minute? Sure, Fred. Uh, excuse me, boy. Well, Sarah... He's you... right. A young'un needs a pa he can look up to. Somebody he can trust to help him get the things he needs. Mm, I always wanted the best for him and, and oh, you. Oh, you always meant well. I know, Ralph. But you always failed. I used to have faith in you, too, but, but I... Sarah, Jamie, <clears throat> man can't change overnight, but he can try. I reckon maybe it ain't too late to put that bottom 40 into sugar cane. We could borrow Mr. Thatcher's mule, Pa. And I'd help you plow. Well, now, that's a bargain, son. Sure. Yeah? You can let him out now. 
Come on, Jamie. I'm going to make me a new start, Sheriff. Yeah. And to prove it, come Christmas, I'm going to bring you a gallon of sugar cane syrup. Well, that's fine. I'll uh, consider that a down payment. A down payment? Yeah, on a little present for Jamie. Fred just found her up the road a ways where that swindler sold her to Lem Brown. Gloria! Mike, Gloria! Well, well I'll She's be... She's back! Uh, and Jamie, let me tell you something. Yes, sir? Oh, Sheriff! You're, you're sure? Yep, got the man's word for it. Gee, gee whiz! So, uh, under the circumstances, I think Mr. Benson will sort of uh, refinance that loan. Yes, sir. Under the circumstances. Well, what do you mean, under the circumstances? Gloria's gonna have pigs, little pigs. <laughs> this is Joan Leslie again. You know... We're all affected by the things around us, by what we see and hear, by the example of others. And that's so very true in a home. If there's always a kind and encouraging word, we can't help but think bright and cheerful thoughts. And you know something? Those who are close to God are best able to be happy and cheerful. Why? Well, when you know that God is ready and able to help you, you can be confident about the future because you know your faith and trust in Him will always bring His help. That's why when a family joins together in daily family prayer, they can be sure of happiness in their home. Yes, pray together as a family every day, for prayer brings peace. A prayerful home is a peaceful home, and the family that prays together stays together. Before saying good night, I'd like to thank Jane Darwell and Bobby Driscoll for their performances this evening. Our thanks to Beth Barnes for writing tonight's play and to Max Tear for his music. This production of Family Theatre Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Barton Yarborough, Clarence Hartzell, Ralph Moody, Charles Maxwell, Jess Kirkpatrick, and Ann Tobin. Next week, our Family Theatre stars will be Preston Foster and Daryl Hickman in Halftime Strategy. Your hostess will be June Lockhart. This is Joan Leslie saying good night and God bless you. This series of the Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when our family theater stars will be Preston Foster and Daryl Hickman with June Lockhart as hostess, Meryl Ross speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>